Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be slightly different because we'll be using the Bricks Builder to create our layout. The question was asked in the Bricks community where the user wanted the hero section where the background image fills the entire viewport, but then it has the text content starting from the box content area, but then stretches all the way to the edge of the screen. I've already tackled something similar using Elementor, but today we'll be using the Bricks Builder to create the layout. So here's the finished product we're going to be creating. Here we have our header section. Then we have our hero section filling the rest of the page. And then we have the text content that is starting from the content area and then goes all the way to the edge of the screen. So basically this is a 1200 pixel area, but then it continues all the way to the edge of the screen. Then we have our text content and then we have an image by the side. So that's what we're going to be creating today. If it interests you, then stick around and we'll go right to the business. So here we are on our Bricks Edit page. The first thing we need is the sectioning element to wrap all our hero section content. So go ahead and add in a section element. That will create a section as well as an inner container. Then within this inner container, we'll add in our text. So starting with the heading. Then I'll also add in some basic text for the description. So now I'll go ahead and I'll populate all the individual elements. I've gone ahead and I've populated them with some content. So now let's give them proper HTML tags. Since this is the hero section, it probably contains the most important heading of the page. So give the heading an H1 tag. The description, which is the basic text, give it a paragraph tag. The container can have a div. Then the section, since this is the hero section, that is basically the header of your main body area. So you can either give it a HTML tag of section or header, because usually the header means it is the main heading for that section, which is in this case is the main body area. This should not be confused with your page header, which basically is your banner landmark. If you don't understand what I'm saying, I will link the MDN docs in the description. Basically, you see, it says when the header tag is used globally, then it is the banner landmark, but otherwise it's basically a section and it contains the heading for the surrounding section. In this case, it's the surrounding main tag. So that's the header for the main tag. So let me go back. But in this case, I'm just going to leave it as a section tag. Now I'll add in some class names so we can begin styling all of the individual elements. I'll use the BEM naming convention. So for the section, I'll give it a block name of hm-hero. Let me copy it. For the container, give it a class name of hm slash hero, but then double underscore. This is the inner container. So I'll just say inner. The heading. Same thing, this time double underscore title. And then for the basic text, which is the description. So I'll add in that class name, then double underscore, say description. So we've gotten all our elements in there. Now let's start styling it. So for the container, I don't want it to be row. I want it to be column. So I'll set it to column. Then I'll set it to be 100% to should not have any max width, it should just be 100% width and max width. So under the style tab, layout with 100% because we want everything to be controlled using CSS grid on the parent section. So max width 100%. So now it's stretching to fit the section. I will also give it a background color so we can easily see what's going on. So under the background, just 
choose this dark color let me make it a bit darker and reduce the opacity a bit stuff like this so that when we're now adding the image we're able to see through the background then give it a typography just set it to white so it's easy to see then i'll also give it some padding around this container let me set the padding to maybe a 24 pixels all around typically you have like one of those frameworks like acss or core frameworks where you've already set up your section spacing but for this example i'm just going to be using the values randomly but i recommend you get a framework and you use those so that your values are consistent all around so let me save it so now we'll go on to the section and then we'll give the section some properties so that it can define how the layout will be using css grid so for the section the key idea here is that we know that we want the box content area to be a certain value in this example i'll be using 75 rem which will equate to 1200 pixels because i'm using one rem to be equal to 16 pixels then we know that the edges should have equal widths and should just take up the rest of the space so what we do is we define our center first then we just say the rest of the space should be shared equally between the two sides to do that just say first display should be grid gap we don't need any gap here then all we say is the left should be 1fr the middle should be 75 rem and then the right should be 1fr but right now the container is taking up the first area which is the 1fr we don't want that so we'll go back to the container then we just say we want it to start from the second column and then want it to stretch all the way to the last column we'll save that then let's see how it looks on the front end preview it you see it starts from the box content area which is the 1200 pixels starting but then it stretches to the edge of the screen which is perfect but one thing you will notice let me start trying to zoom into the page see once it gets past that 75 rem you start to get an overflow but we don't want an overflow that is a failure we want the content should remain within the proper area so what we need to do is rather than just setting a fixed width of 75 rem we need to make it variable how do we do that we use what we call the main function we set an ideal value and then we set the max value should be 75 rem so go back onto the section so rather than just 75 rem we set it to be mean of 100 percent then should be the max width should be that 75 rem now when we save it and go back to the front end you notice that now there is no more overflow it is filling the entire page but there's no overflow it's just fitting to the 100 percent when the viewport width is now becoming too small it sticks to the 100 percent but now you see that it's going edge to edge and we may not really want that we want to have some spacing at the edge so rather than using one fr we can use a min max function where the mean value is our section padding and then the max value is our one fr so we replace this one fr by min max i'll use 10 pixels in this example but you use your preferred section padding so and then the max value is one fr we'll have to add that value to the other side as well because they have to be equal then finally rather than 100 percent now we have to reduce the 100 percent to reflect that padding value so you see 100 percent minus 2 multiplied by the 10 pixels and when we save it and go to the front end and preview it you see that we get that 10 pixel uh, section padding and there is no overflow then when we go back to 100 percent zoom see that we get back our 1fr 
the 75 RAM and then one FR to make it stretch to the edge of the screen. Let me zoom it back in. But currently, we are using lots of values in different places, and this can become quite messy, which is not good for maintainability. So if you want to improve the maintainability of your code, we can replace these different values with some custom variables. And then all we have to do is just reference those custom variables back in our grid template columns so that when those variables are changed in that one place, it reflects everywhere on our page. What do I mean by that? We can go to the style tab under the custom CSS. Just use the roots so I'll say R tab, open and close the bracket. We start with the padding, so double hyphen underscore padding. And say that is 10 pixels. Then the content width, double hyphen underscore content width. That should be 75 rem. So now we can replace those fixed values with these variables. So we'll go back. So now where we see 10 pixels, we replace it with var padding. Let me just copy that because we're using it in multiple places. So the 10 pixels, replace that. And the 10 pixels here, place that as well. Then the 75 rem, that should be replaced with var content width. And we get back to where we were before. Now the good thing now is that when we go to the style tab, we can easily just replace these values. So let's say you've already set up a custom variable for your section padding. So you can just say var and then reference that variable again. And it will work. Or you can just change it to values that are fixed. So like maybe 24 pixels or something. However, it is in your own website design. That's what you're going to be using here. But I'll just use 10 pixels to make it consistent. So after we've done that, Let's move on to the next step, which is applying our background image, which should fill the viewport height. So what we do first is that we have to first give the section a height. Then we set the content to be at the bottom. And finally, we apply our image. So start with the section. So under the layout tab, I'll give it a mean height. The mean height should be ideally 100 VH, but we have to also take into account the header. So let's first get the height of the header. So we'll go to our front end, right click on the header, inspect, and you see that the height of the header is 80 pixels, which is about 5 rem. So I'll go and then say the calc, say 100 VH minus the 5 rem. So now we get our section, which is filling the rest of the space. So we can save that. And now you see it on the front end. Let me remove the inspector. You notice that it's having some space in that just because of the admin bar. We can ignore that. When a viewer is viewing it as a visitor, that top bar will not be there. So everything will work out just fine. So now let's go to the second step, which is that we want the text content to be at the bottom. Ideally, you just go on the section to the content and set the align items to bottom. But since we're going to be applying a background image, I would just prefer to use the container itself to have that alignment. So let me remove this and go to the container and set the align self to bottom. So we can save that. Now the next step is to apply our background image. There are multiple ways to do this. You can just apply a direct background image to the section. Or you can use an image widget and then style it using CSS to look like a background image. We'll be using the second method in this example. So I'll go ahead and I'll add in an image. Let me move it to the top. So within the section, then I'll give it the class name of hm-hero double underscore image. So I can save that. Now I'm going to style it to look like a background image. So first, let me add in a content. So select image, just select this image. Make sure you add in an alt text for the image because screen reader users cannot see the image. They rely on the 
all the text that you put in there to understand the image. So we install that. Right now, it's not showing properly because it is within the first column that we cannot see there. So now we have to set it to have the grid column and grid row to fill the entire grid area. So go to the Style tab. First, I'll give it a width and a height. So set the width to 100%. And the height to 100%. We still cannot see it because it is in the first grid column. So now go to your CSS, then do root, then I'll say grid column should be one, start from the first and finish at the last, which is minus one. Grid row, start from the first and finish at the last, which is minus one. Save that. Then let me set it to object fit. So content, object fit should be cover, save. Then the container as well, we'll make them to be in the same row so that they can overlap each other. So go to the container, click on the class name, and then just set it to start from the first row and finish at the last row. So both of them now are sitting within the same row. So that's why they're overlapping. The only trouble now is that when we refresh, you see that the height of the image is now taken into account. So that's why it is going past the 100 VH that we set. So we have to now basically remove the image from the flow of the grid. To do that, we just set it to position of absolute. So I'll go to the image, style tab, layout, and then set the position to be absolute but it should be absolutely positioned relative to your section so go to the section click on this class name and give it this position of relative now save that but right now you see that the image has gone in front of the container so all you have to do is go back to the image and give it a z index and that it should go directly to the back so just give it a negative z index so that it starts behind every other content let me save that. Now when you preview it on the front end, you see that now everything is working out fine. Let me show 100%. Everything is working out just fine. So we've finished with the main section. So now let's figure out this text because currently the text is stretching to the edge and this is difficult to read because ideally you shouldn't go past 80 characters for your text length, because it becomes very difficult for the eyes to go through and read everything. So now all we have to do is go back to a section. I will go to each of the individual text contents. You can just wrap everything within a div and then apply a max width to that div, but I will apply it to each individual um, widget. So I'll go to the style tab, the max width, I'll just set it to probably 45 characters. Copy that and do the same for the description. Set it to a max width of 45 characters. So now it is relatively easier to read. Then I will apply that image that was in the example. For this, I'll be using an absolutely positioned pseudo element on the container. For that one, I'm just going to copy and paste. I'll leave a link to it in the description below because I don't want to go through everything. But basically, I'm using an SVG, which is a background image within the studio element and that's what I'm using to position it to the bottom left of the screen. So I'll just go to the container, CSS, and then just drop in some CSS. So now we have our icon there. The last thing is to check for mobile responsiveness. So we go to the content, so now start going through all of them. See that Everything looks mobile responsive, but let's say for whatever reason, you want this image to now be separate from the text content on mobile. So what you can do is that for the mobile portrait or movie mobile, you can now set the image to rather being a position absolute to become a position of static so that it is now within the flow of the grid. So go to the style tab, the layout this time change the position from absolute back to static then 
under the section, you can now change it from a grid to a flex and then a column direction flex. So flex and the direction to be column. And you see now the image is at the top, the text is at the bottom and everything just aligns perfectly. So you can save that and preview it on the front end. So let's inspect it. See when we go downward, everything is flowing. But when we now get to the mobile view, it immediately switches to image at the top and the text at the bottom. And yeah, that's it. If this video has helped you, please do leave a like, share the video, write your comments, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.